Welcome to the unboxing technology series by Digiterati. This video is on GitOps. Uh, we are going to have a brief understanding about what GitOps is all about and what this practice is all about and uh, what this idea is all about. And uh, we are going to just understand the length and breadth of uh, this particular uh, framework to be precise. And in the process, uh, generally, uh, if this idea is understood, we have to come up with a set of uh, tools and um, other associated stuff together to formulate a practice. So we'll uh, analyze all that stuff as we proceed. So let's get into this discussion properly. Um, So everybody here must have heard about DevOps. And uh, before we get into a complete discussion about GitOps, Though the two terms sound very, very similar, as of now, before we uh, go step by step into the discussion, I just want to tell you uh, very precisely and clearly, DevOps is more of a generic term. Of course, we'll make a comparative study. It is more specific in the approach. is more generic in terms of the approach of uh, solving the problem involved in uh, development operations whereas GitOps is very very specific and as you could see this so called Git plays a very 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 crucial role in terms of uh, this particular model so first of all if you ask me what GitOps is all about basically it's a framework It's not a development framework or something. It's an operational framework that is to operate a development process and infrastructure management. We need to follow a certain idea. So it's a development and operational framework which we infuse to make the whole system operatable in an effective way, right? So let's we'll get into the formal definition of uh, GitOps. But at this very point of time, all I want to say is it is more specific about its approach the uh, reason why it is called as git ops is it takes up the devops process into picture the idea called devops is being used here but the focus is mainly on what infrastructure management that is operational management and uh, The infrastructure details are maintained in the form of a configuration in this operational style and the single point of truth, the whole information about your whole system, not only about your infrastructure, but also about your projects, but also about your uh, microservices, your infrastructure, everything involved in your whole system. Where can I get the whole information about my system is single point of truth, the place where the entire details about your entire system where it is actually stored us in a code repository called as git right so since it plays uh, since it becomes a single uh, point of truth the whole idea is basically called as git ops so let me precisely get into the point Generally, in a DevOps mechanism, 
it's a pi uh, collaborator of your uh, code build process testing process deployment process everything in the form of a pipeline basically but apart from this the production environment usually in a devops uh, uh, ecosystem we assume that the production ecosystem is there and we build a pipeline or we actually write a release pipeline to make our build code reach the production environment that's how we generally study devops but whereas uh, gitops is it's a new normal as they specify you code build test package release your application right and we give direct access to the production so we can even manipulate the production ecosystem completely by provisioning the production infrastructure also with the help of the process which is involved so let's get into the actual formal understanding or formal idea of gitops as it is mentioned here gitops is basically an operational framework we should not understand or misunderstand it as some development framework uh, for example developers use frameworks like spring spring boot uh, .NET framework it's not a development framework it's basically an operational framework which collaborates various kinds of tools together what it does basically is the base underlying idea is it takes the idea of devops best practices so already an idea called devops is so popular in the industry everywhere when it comes to operations uh, operational uh, management of your uh, whole project or whatever the system ecosystem which you are building we infuse the idea called uh, devops where in devops a team of members would be collaborating together with set of tools at each levels where a high level of automation will be involved to carry out the whole process right so gitops is one thing which makes use of this devops bit, uh, best practices and it it makes devops even more specific so what we use it for is we use it for application development number one so gitops is basically an operational framework that uses devops best practices for what when you are developing applications so when you are doing this what are the key factors which you consider is number one you maintain the code version control and number two collaboration of various things that are involved what is the collaboration of things number one you will have code involved right you'd have infrastructure involved under infrastructure you'll have uh, say virtual machines containers everything involved you'll have team involved so everything needs to be collaborated together and the level of automation uh, needs to be uh, there at the same time you need to have some organization specifications and security that needs to be infused on the system so it also takes care of compliance to various specifications and rules as well as security specifications plus the whole idea should be continuously integratable and deliverable so it infuses this major principles and number one it's not only for application if if it limits this things it is already part of Dev, uh, devops so generally when you're uh, reading devops or when you're in uh, taking care of devops this itself is devops but the point is uh, in devops when we uh, infuse that in a system we certainly limit it to only this that is maintaining the code collaborating the team and uh, sticking to the various principles that are involved whether you take behavioral driven development or test driven development whatever you take whatever the approach you take sticking to the various uh, specifications that you have you build a continuous integration and continuous release cycle and automate it to a very uh, effective level and we operate the system generally it is limited to application development alone but if you take it one more level and if you apply the same to infrastructure automation as well so that is what exactly the first pick has shown us so usually we'll restrict ourselves 
to this but if you take it to infrastructure as well and if you could provision the infrastructure on the fly by having the infrastructure configuration and specification in the form of code as you run the code or as you uh, implement the code if infrastructure is generated then if you are applying the principles of devops for infrastructure management as well additionally in addition to application management if you are taking it to the next level to the whole infrastructure management or as well that is what we call git ops so i hope you have got the idea of what git ops is all about but you have to also wonder about why is it so important is it really necessary to take the devops principle even for infrastructure automation that question needs to come into picture because when this question needs to come in picture is if the infrastructure is so volatile or uh, subjected to change that is what i call volatile if it is not going to continuously changing this this level of thinking is not necessary suppose uh, you know that for my application i need two db servers i need three application servers i need four virtual machines i need uh, one web server so if this is my need if i am very clear about it do i need to think about infrastructure automation no manually i can create it manually i can place it at one location manually i can write only the deployment pipeline that is if somebody uh, gives the code i can take it to the ci cd system and uh, the ci cd system will be putting into the required infrastructure so that is also devops there in the devops ecosystem we will not be doing anything to manage provision this infrastructure this would be already in place but if the system is so volatile you don't know how many vms will be no needed you don't know if there are containers how many containers will be uh, needed suppose if there are 1000 requests per minute maybe you might think uh, be sticking to five containers if it reaches to a level of 10000 uh, request suddenly you may want to increase the number of uh, containers that are running to five more and you might run 10 containers at a time so suddenly you are taking an infrastructure decision and you are uh, able to scale it up so and uh, all of a sudden you may want to increase a uh, uh, database server so if the system is so ad hoc and if the system is uh, uh, subjected to continuous changes there must be a process there must be a properly maintained process not only that if the infrastructure is not so simple like this if it is having too many things if you if it has lot of virtual networks if it has lot of vms if it has lot of containers if it has lot of uh, uh, middlewares that are uh, involved if you are maintaining a very very complicated system and if there are too many things to involve if there are too many things to provision if you keep manually doing all that uh, things if you are manually running those commands and uh, installing things it is going to take ages for you some level of automation or some level of automatic creation of infrastructure automatic updation of infrastructure is needed so in the current uh, uh, situation nobody is actually having a fixed uh, infrastructure for deployment uh, uh, we move towards an idea of microservice based uh, development cloud based development so everything is uh, so so volatile now and uh, too many things are involved now so manual process cannot be a viable solution so apart from the usual code management of your application apart from usual building of your code and deploying it on the infrastructure creating the infrastructure itself creating the things involved in the infrastructure creating the network itself is a challenge right now that is where the idea called gitops and its principles comes into picture for the rescue so exactly this idea is all about not only about the code management of your application but also the infrastructure management should be following the similar process as that of the uh, devops 
so here the whole idea is people there might be some people who are hardcore uh, members who are involved in only in operations generally they will not be taking too much uh, thinking too much about development but when it comes to uh, gitops even a person who is involved in operation who is architecting the infrastructure of the organization must have some minimal coding knowledge not only coding knowledge they also need to know what is version control system how to push the code into repository and uh, how to build a pipeline and uh, once the code is uh, pushed into the pipeline one must know how the infrastructure is uh, uh, created so all this process need to be known even by a person who is involved in the operation as well so that is the skills demanded right now right and as i have just discussed when it comes to devops it's all about full life cycle of a product development and it's basically who takes devops into their hands is a team of members and a set of tools collaborate together to uh, take up the idea of devops and actually devops is something which enables better software development and delivery practices the prime focus is generally in a devops principle it's all about software development that is application development and its delivery continuously that's what it focus and who actually takes care of it i mean who actually involves in creating the software and delivering it in the sense people are involved in uh, creating it and uh, uh, who is pushing the code people are pushing the code but the delivery as well as continuous integration is taken care by the automated integration service so basically what it does is it accelerates that is it enhances the speed of our uh, development and it enables continuous delivery that is what devops is all about but apart from this what additional principles you got to understand is we got to take in one more things into the normal devops cycle that is usually it's not only source code about so usually in a, uh, a, a git repository source code of your application that is your software will be maintained and for that ci cd pipeline will be made and uh, before we uh, make a ci cd pipeline what we do is we actually make a merge request once you make a merge request if that is uh, examined by a team of people that is you have added the right code everything if they test it if they check it the merge request would be made and the ci cd pipeline will take it to the infrastructure that is what the actual process of devops i hope everybody is able to correlate generally in a devops cycle people will write source code they will be pushing it to the code repository and the developer whoever uh, uh, developed the source code will be making a merge request and there will be peer reviewers people who can review your code they will review the code which you have kept it in the repository and once they find everything is to be fine and uh, if they are okay with what you have pushed they will be moving into ci cd pipeline and uh, it would ultimately develop the infrastructure so let me come into the best uh, principles or principles that we follow in the gitops so as i have told generally in devops the prime focus will be mostly almost 100% 90% on application deployments we never care much about infrastructure generation in a devops uh, cycle but when it comes to gitops as you could see there must be and for infrastructure creation maybe we might be using other ways like manually creating or uh, other uh, techniques but in gitops the primary thing is we maintain a single source of truth right that is we accelerate and simplify both not only application deployment 
but also operation. So when it comes to operation, what key thing is needed for taking up the operation? Infrastructure. So even the infrastructure management is taken care by um, infusing the code related to infrastructure in the Git itself. That is a source code uh, management itself. So my point is how can you make use of this? What plays a crucial role? Any software which is capable of taking care of generating infrastructure if you provide code. So that idea is called as infrastructure as code. So in GitOps, one of the key building block or one of the key uh, pillar is infrastructure as code. So apart from this, there must be a mechanism to continuously monitor your system. There must be an automated process and ability to track changes to the environment. So today you will be having virtual machine 1 to virtual machine 5. All of a sudden the load might reduce. You might be scaling it down to only 3 virtual machines. And all of a sudden you might be maintaining 3 DB servers. Suddenly you might remove it. And in a virtual network you might be having two subnets. As per the demands, all, all of a sudden you might be adding one more subnet. So there must be a mechanism to keep track of this entire configuration. What is there in your infrastructure? What virtual network are you using? What are the hosts involved in your system? And uh, how many subnets are there? And what subnets are newly created? If there is a need to create a new subnet. Everything needs to be tracked and if necessary, uh, we need to know the status of all the things. So there must be some kind of change management and tracking necessary for managing your uh, infrastructure. So two things you have to understand. There must be single source of truth, not only for your application development, but also for your deployment operation. So where is actually that single source of uh, truth is? It is maintained in your code repository. Okay. Number one, solution for maintaining single source of truth is to establish, I mean to make use of code repository where you can store it. Number two, change management and compliance as well as tracking the environment is needed. For that, we need configuration management tools. So tools which which can do configuration management needs to be infused right so apart from this infrastructure integrity is needed that is a production environment whatever that matches your desired state desired state is based on the load or based on the number of requests based on the throughput based on the latency so you might be having various parameters in picture so constantly you might be making some business decisions okay uh, for example, you might be finding your responses to be too slow or uh, you might be getting too many uh, requests and uh, people might uh, think that they are getting the information process too late. So based on the needs and based on the day to day behavior of the system, you should assess the state of your infrastructure and you must be able to change it. So to constantly manage that, to constantly change it you must be having something which generates infrastructure on the fly. So for that you need to have a descriptive code which describes your infrastructure. So there must be some tools which can let you write infrastructure as a code and if you give that code to uh, that particular uh, tool or platform, it should be able to generate the infrastructure for you. So certain tools are they work as um, both. You can maintain configuration about a system. You can maintain deployments uh, with that system and also you can provision the infrastructure. Certain tools are uh, limited only to the infrastructure provisioning. They will not be taking care about uh, configuration management and all. Configuration management is nothing but having a whole picture about what is there in your ecosystem. 
right what is your production environment what is your development environment what are the uh, vms that are available in your uh, development environment what ip address scheming you are using so it is it will be having an entire description about your system and once you have that system by using infrastructure as a code you can generate it right so in gitops apart from the usual devops cycle three major things which you need to take care as as mentioned in the picture you should maintain a single source of truth right so um, so as i have already told don't think i'm repeating it just i'm establishing it somewhere you need to maintain the whole details about not only your source code of your applications but also the infrastructure details should be maintained as in the form of code in the git once you have it right your ci cd tool will read that and it will make use of your iac tools as well as the configuration management tools right it will collaborate these two tools that is what collaboration is all about and what it does it establishes infrastructure integrity and change management right so by following this uh, principles as i have just told you will have a version control system right once you push your code into the version control system a developer would make a merge request upon merge request a ci cd a pipeline will run which will automatically deploy the infrastructure code and uh, seamlessly what it would do it would uh, regenerate or recreate a desired state of your application sorry your infrastructure so that would seamlessly provide a service to the vendors which increases the productivity so infrastructure keeps up with the development as per the productivity needs right so that is what the whole idea is all about i sincerely think or assume that you understand what this idea about but the primary thing is if you have to be i mean if you are aware in all already some devops environment already you must be knowing all these terms constantly for the past 20 minutes one thing is constantly coming out of my mouth that is apart from usual application what else is very very important here is infrastructure as well as the configuration involved in your application should also be maintained as a code that is the key 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 strength of gitops and uh, why why this is so important in the sense i as i already told the infrastructure involved is not constant because the model is basically i mean the development and uh, deployment model is basically distributed in nature we started using containers we started using microservices and we started using virtual machines perhaps uh, these are the various reasons particularly the distributed ecosystem is the prime reason behind going for maintaining the code for infrastructure as well so i'll tell you the reasons which uh, that are that is pushing you towards this particular approach because people started developing applications a very 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 popular approach right now in the market is for infrastructure not only infrastructure but also for some platform the platform may be a database platform or an application platform or a runtime whatever it is as well as some services or softwares for all these needs instead of going for their own deployment their own uh, uh, infrastructure people started investing as well as relying on cloud so there must be some cases where the application model could be hybrid that is partially the deployment could be on premise and partially the deployment could be on cloud as well but when it comes to cloud native development 100%
as I have told, for the software needs, for the hardware needs, that is nothing but infrastructure. When it comes to the software, it might be operating system, it might be application platform, it might be database, or it might be a runtime, or it might be a messaging system, no matter what it is, for all the needs, if you are not using any of your on-premise ecosystem, if you are completely relying on cloud ecosystem, maybe you might be relying completely on AWS or you might be using Azure or you might be using them together. But whatever you do, end of the day, if everything which you do is cloud, that is, if you need infrastructure, you might be using infrastructure as a service. If you need a platform, you might be using platform as a service. If you need some software services, you might be using software as a service. All these cloud models will be used by you without going for any of the on-premise system. That is, you are not following any um, hybrid model. So if this is the case, theoretically, the universally accepted principle for uh, are the best practices uh, that are followed uh, everywhere for uh, making a cloud native development is in the current system, cloud native development stresses the application architecture. Number one, application architecture. Or in other words, development architecture. They stress everyone who decides to take cloud native development, they want your applications to be following microservices approach. So when you are taking microservice approach, the challenge is Suppose if you have some uh, 150 or uh, 200 different uh, problems to be uh, addressed. Generally, if you have that many requirements, problems is nothing but requirements. If you have that many requirements to be addressed, so generally what you will do is you'll do a very, very big solution. In that solution, you'll be having multiple modules where each module will be dealing with a couple of uh, solutions for the requirements. and everything will be finally uh, maintained in one solution and you'll go for deploying that entire solution in a middleware and uh, to make this um, uh, solution available to the general public what we do is we probably recreate the middleware as multiple uh, deployments and we load balance it and we make it available but for running this middleware which addresses this big solution you must be understanding how uh, big this server could be and how much memory capacity it needs to have to resolve the request. So, in the current uh, market scenario, uh, going for a horizontal scaling. Horizontal scaling is increasing the number of servers. It's very, very difficult if you go for this age-old approach where deploying all the solutions which you have provided in one place. Because recreating the new system becomes a very, very big challenge. So, this approach is effective, but as far as cloud native development and uh, a, a thing which involves too many uh, requirements, ad hoc requirements, this rather going for this requirement, people started believing a new approach. If I have n number of problems, let me resolve a problem with independent solutions called as microservices. For example, I need a identity management, that is I want to manage security. Suppose I want to manage product catalog. Suppose I want to manage some finances regarding my organization. Suppose I may want to manage some web apps related to my application. So for each purpose, I might be creating a separate microservice. So imagine there is going to be hundreds of such microservices. If it is hundreds of uh, uh, such microservices having, the key problem that comes into picture is Number one, how do you manage the infrastructure and how do you monitor the infrastructure? And also, how do you constantly create? Now, you might have 100 microservices to run. Each microservice might be running as a replica. That is, you might be running it as two copies, three copies. All of a sudden, if the load is very high, you might be running it as 10 copies. How would you manage the configuration of it and how would you create them? becomes a challenge. So we'll go to that part and all, but primarily what I want to tell you is in a cloud native development, rather going for the age old uh, monolithic approach, they stress to make or take up the development by following an approach called as microservice approach, number one. 
right so if you are following a microservice approach just now i told that the challenge is there is going to be too many microservices running so understanding where they are deployed how they are deployed in which systems they are deployed right and how is it running what ip address it is occupying very very complicated so if it is so complicated as we have been stressing right from the beginning there must be some single point of truth about the whole system which is very very essential i need to know the details about the infrastructure involved right and number 2 cloud native development stresses rather going for a virtual machine based uh, deployment or a direct deployment on a physical system or a middleware based deployment it don't encourage any of this and i don't want to deviate uh, into any of the concepts which are out of the scope of this particular discussion but i just want to tell you i don't know how many of you attending this have a complete understanding about what containers is what docker is so let me not get deep into it but the point is as far as cloud native development is concerned rather going for any other kind of uh, running your application they prefer or they want you to run your microservices or application whatever you develop in the form of containers so if there are too many containers managing the containers is a real challenge very very difficult but it is easy if you are using some tools called as container orchestration utilities so most cloud services they themselves provide a container orchestration service or there is a very very popular service in the globe called as kubernetes which is the most popular among uh, the services that are available so i don't want to get in uh, into the deeper understanding of uh, what this kubernetes is all about what container orchestration all about but at this point just to stress the idea of gitops i want to point out the problem that since cloud native development since this model demands people to develop everything in the form of you must be already observing in the industry any development uh, right now when now it is rather going for a, a traditional approach people started developing things in the form of microservice and you might have already observed when you are developing something uh, in the form of a microservice your team perhaps would be asking you to dockerize the application create a container out of it and they they'll send the container for a deployment that is the docker file for deployment and it will be deploying it in something called as kubernetes or uh, some other utilities so the point is basically if you are using this cloud native approach it is demanding us to go for container based deployment so the architecture of your application needs to be this the deployment nature of uh, your application needs to be this and not only that it has to be continuously deliverable it's not that every friday i do it every uh, month i do it every week i do it no it has to be constantly deliverable if i make a change the change has to immediately reflect in the container the container has to be serving it continuously so the he heavy level of uh, uh, automation is required in terms of uh, delivering the process at the same time not only continuous delivery a proper collaboration between people who develop this microservices and proper collaboration between people who manages this container needs to be established so when it comes to development it's about coding it's about building it's about uh, packing all this when it comes to operation orchestrating monitoring all this right so taking all this into consideration there must be some proper principles and toolkit to be involved in the picture that's where devops comes into picture so the popular the most popular approach in application development in the current market particularly when you are going for a cloud native approach is a cloud native development approach so when you are following a cloud native development approach the four pillars which collaborate that aspect is containers microservices infusing devops and continuous delivery so if these three things has to happen without any problem by taking devops principles into picture so details 
of your containers, details of your microservices, details of the VMs which actually runs your uh, containers, details of your uh, network where your VMs are available. All this should be maintained and should be monitored at one single point, right? So that is where to manage this effectively along with DevOps, very, very important thing is configuration management plus infrastructure as a code is very, very crucial. So it's no more only about thinking about developing a source code for your application, deploying them but also the infrastructure needed for your entire deployment also should be maintained in the form of code the infrastructure needed for your deployment should be generated on the fly so for that even that code should be maintained in the devops ecosystem that's what the whole idea is okay So to summarize what I have discussed, the current demand is we have, if you take up the development, we have delivery and deployment concerns, we have development concerns. So when you are taking up the development, the architecture of the application fix it to service based, that is use microservice architecture. And I didn't talk about communication, I'll talk about it. When it comes to deployment concern, ensure that you are uh, doing everything in the form of containers. And uh, to bridge the gap between this code as well as the deployment, ensure that you are taking up a proper process, ensure you are infusing DevOps principles. So apart from this, if one service has to communicate with other service, right, ensure that you are making one service available to other service by exposing an API. So everything you develop should be based on API driven and event driven ecosystem. So event based programming as well as API based programming plays a very crucial role in the, in the, in this development model. Okay. So now I come to the usual GitOps model, right? So what exactly is GitOps and what process we take up in GitOps is? This is what exactly I have been talking for the past 30, 40 minutes. So as far as code base is concerned, so earlier the code would be only app code, but right now, apart from app code, right? You also write infrastructure definition right that is usually what we call template templating of your infrastructure all right and infrastructure needed for your app deployment that is app infra right all this is written in the form of code okay and uh, first if an application developer writes a code they'll push it into say repository one And if the source code is built, and particularly I told the ecosystem is a container based ecosystem. And to understand it better, anybody who is having the knowledge of Docker, they can understand it very immediately. If you're not having the idea of Docker or containerization, you might be finding it uh, a bit odd or difficult. But the point is, so generally, uh, if you're developing something, if you're deploying it in the form of uh, containers, right? First of all, the source code, if it is built, a container will be created. That is image will be created to be precise, not a container. Image container, container image will be created. So the place where your uh, containers images are stored is what really call, was, we call as registry, right? So generally, once you build your code, you would store the image in the registry. So this image has to be executed and it has to be made available as a application or a service right so 
for this you need to have what infrastructure created so in the other end what we do is your application how it needs to be deployed and overall cluster definition all this would be written in the form of code it will be given to git so whatever the GitOps tool that is uh, a tool like ansible or a tool like uh, terraform if i give it to a particular GitOps tool a ci cd tool will call this GitOps tool and it will create the infrastructure and whatever the container that is built that will also be updated to the this repo so what it will do do is that uh, in, uh, container details that image details will be updated into this repo so it will take up the image it will deploy it in the infrastructure that is created by this so what you have to understand is according to this ecosystem there is nothing in prior right everything we are generating on the fly not only the code the code build process plus also infrastructure process so here in this picture what they are representing is since we are actually trying to run the container we are running the containers in clusters of an ecosystem called kubernetes so this is a kubernetes example but in real time you can uh, treat that infrastructure as anything so ultimately in the idea of uh, gitops what i'm trying to put forward is it's not only about writing the application code but also in the git you'll also be pushing the infra code and once you update the code what we do is we take the application build and uh, we generate the infrastructure on the fly and uh, the code will be i mean the final uh, container would be deployed on the infrastructure right if at all you are following container based deployment this is just an example like this no matter which model you are following for all this even for infrastructure you need to maintain the code in the git so git is a single point of truth as far as this model is concerned so the overall principle of gitops is whatever the system which you are, you idealize so whatever system which you think right should be first described by you declaratively so everything should be in the form of code right whatever the desired state of the system i need this virtual machine i need this subnets i need this many containers this is where my registry is everything should be currently maintained and versioned in a single point of truth called as git and as i have been telling right from the beginning you need to make a memoir mr means merge request so what they will do is a group of uh, members would check whether everything is properly coded and properly available or not upon approving of the changes that uh, the that can be done the changes would be applied automatically applied okay and it's not only about that you should be able to understand the differences that are happening and upon changes there must be proper monitoring of the system so we must be able to ensure the correctness and if at all anything problematic we must be constantly monitoring it we say there should be a facility for raising alerts notifications changes everything so that is the key principle of gitops mechanism so in a nutshell to be precise as simple as that we write application code we write configuration we write infrastructure three levels so configuration is details of the system infrastructure as code is code to provision infra the actual application which you develop so everything is being stored at one point called git and this is where ci cd pipeline things like jenkins argo travis or azure devops all these pictures comes into picture then it will go for <coughs> production and monitoring okay so that is what github is all about so 
next thing what i want to tell you is about tooling okay so when you decide to take gitops one must think about what tools to be in, infused in the ecosystem so you decided to take up gitops so four essential things which we need to think is number one place where i store the single point of truth or single source of truth that is what a repository okay so for a repository you can use github or you can use a bitbucket or you can use gitlab or you can use azure repos n options are there so first you need to decide where you want to maintain the repository number one number two a continuous integration component when you say continuous integration component it can be argo it can be jenkins it can be azure pipeline right so there are various options which lets us build pipelines so when you are building pipeline uh, we have to think what container orchestration uh, tool we will be using whether it is kubernetes whether it is docker swarms or whether it is cloud we have to decide and apart from this to generate this particular infrastructure right and uh, network everything we need some infrastructure automation utility which would take care of two things that is configuration management and infrastructure provisioning so here is where tools like terraform ansible chef puppet all this comes into picture so once you have all this in picture then what after the creation of infrastructure after the deployment of application you need to know what is happening right and how it is performing whether the system is healthy or not right so constantly you need to target the infrastructure and you need to know about it so for this tools like prometheus elk stack and uh, azure monitor or aws cloud watch all these are components which monitors your system which can understand your system and which can raise uh, alerts notifications etc based on uh, the threshold values whatever you have configured so if the infrastructure is not properly in place the monitoring system will take care of it so what i am trying to conclusively tell you from this particular uh, uh, point is when you want to uh, get into installing or uh, infusing gitops ecosystem four key points one need to be always uh, putting in places you need to have a proper choice of infrastructure automation utilities you need to have a proper tool for uh, ci cd and you need to have a proper ecosystem for monitoring four principles or four basic tools and a proper version control system so you can ignore uh, whatever the things you want but you cannot ignore these four things in a gitops environment the environment can be there if and only if you properly choose this four things together okay so based on your budget based on your needs you can choose any version control system any ci cd system and any monitoring system and any infrastructure and based on your microservices and your containers you have to choose a way to deploy your application it's not always kubernetes it depends upon your organization needs okay exactly this is what the process from your ide you push the code right and it will be tested and from there it will be going for deployment into the clusters once it is deployed you will be able to monitor it trace it right and uh, finally we'll be able to operate on the system so in this gitops git is the basic single source of truth and you can always compare the desired state of the system so if at all you are making any changes how was the old system what is the current system what changes has been made what new uh, containers are added what containers are removed all the details can be took at any point of time right so
so what what things basically you uh, develop in the coders So in the infrastructure as code, what we do is number one we use this tools chef puppet salt or uh, terraform or ansible so number one we try to orchestrate the containers number two we try to create resources on the any of this cloud ecosystem and apart from this your application code is concerned right not only uh, application code but also your infrastructure code is going to be maintained in the source code version control system and there must be a mechanism to do build automation right and once it is built there must be a way to go for test automation when it is done you need to go for the staging environment then it should go for the production so you know that so generally uh, when you are uh, pushing something into git first it has to be tested in the development environment as a code and finally you will be infusing test cases and uh, in the test ecosystem you will run in the test environment so once it passes the test case it would be going for staging that is which almost replicates the production environment and uh, ready to be uh, putting into production environment so once it is in the staging environment finally it will be moving to production environment so until this four stages we not only write code but also infrastructure So as far as configuration management and planning is concerned, as I told, you need to ideate the system. I told uh, just five minutes back. At this point, I clearly told that the key principle of GitOps is the entire system should be declared made as a declarative statement that is it should be available to you as a code so if it has to be done primarily what should be done is you need to have the idea of the configuration of your infrastructure and whole deployment so as far as comp uh, configuration management is concerned the primary thing is first of all you need to identify the configuration of your system and uh, you need to have control over the system create update compare the state all needs to be done right so there must be an ecosystem where you can control the configuration and you need to know about the configuration and you need to check monitor whether it is working properly or not so there must be a way to verify and audit it so what plays a crucial role is it's not uh, the whole ecosystem of configuration management tool any configuration management tool the underlying principle is once you identify the configuration right it should be providing a way to control the configuration understand the difference in the configuration and monitor the configuration that's what any configuration and management utility does so from now on whatever i uh, talk i think i as much as i can i interrelated what is cloud native development what is devops and where gitops comes into picture what is the process involved in gitops and what is the tools involved in gitops and what is ci cd system what is western control system and where exactly infrastructure as code comes into picture everything so no matter what if i try to define any of the terms again you'll be trying to get same terms again so any infrastructure as a core system like chef or puppet or ansible right what they actually does is they does two things one is infrastructure provisioning that is if you write code infrastructure would be generated that is a vm would be generated 
uh, maybe a DB server would be created, all this. Apart from this, if you change it, right? For example, I created a virtual network. I have one subnet, two subnet right now. All of a sudden, I added one more subnet. So earlier there were two subnets, right now there is uh, one more. So that details has to be maintained then uh, the state change must be analyzed. Earlier the system was like this. Right now you change the system to this. So this was there, this was removed. So everything should be comparatively studied and the details need to be known. So configuration management needs to be done. So all of this system, one way or other, provides you way to do both. Once it is done, you would be able to monitor it, okay? So let me compare GitOps with DevOps already since we have talked enough. Now you must be able to understand the difference. Right now everybody knows about DevOps and everywhere it is followed. Even GitOps is followed but whether they are giving it the name called GitOps is the question mark. So to be very precise the approach used is there is no fixed set of tools or approaches in uh, DevOps. It is your complete idea what you want to infuse in it. It is quite open. So in terms of uh, its nature, it is quite open. So not bound to any tool, but here it follows a specific set of tools. And uh, what major tools we use is what plays a very crucial role in terms of DevOps is since the principle is dev and operations. According to DevOps principle, by definition itself, bridging gap between development environment and operations ecosystem is what the real aim of DevOps. So when they talk about it, something which integrates this is very important. So what plays a very crucial role is something which integrates and continuously delivers plays a crucial role, pipeline. Whereas in case of GitOps, what it is, I have infrastructure, I have code, of application. I need some place where I uh, know about my entire system because my uh, system is very complicated. So some single point of truth is very important. So no matter what, you use some tools, you miss some tools, but the main tool which is involved in GitOps is Git. And uh, focus is too much clarity on each and everything, how my infrastructure is and how many uh, resources are being used and what memory is it handling and uh, where it is deployed, what is the location, every single thing about the configuration will be maintained in the form of infrastructure as code. So everything is done so accurately and precisely in terms of GitOps. DevOps, it's all about your implementation, how precise you are, depends, okay? And uh, as I have told, it actually talks about the same point, correctness also. When it comes to DevOps, it's not restrictive. It's uh, since we are implementing it, we have wide open options. We can uh, choose an ecosystem in a way you want. But GitOps, since it is more specific about the principles, since they clearly say you have to use Git, you have to put the infrastructure code as well as application code. This is the way to handle it. Since it is a kind of uh, closed approach, so they say it is less open and it's a stricter in terms of approach, okay? In fact, this also talks about the same. So uh, when it comes to tooling again, so practically when you go for uh, implementation, we almost uh, reach the wedge of theoretical description. When you are talking about the tools, 
some tools focuses only on infrastructure as code they would not be focusing much on configuration management some tools uh, takes care of both configuration management as well as infrastructure so by definition you need to know the clear cut differences in terms of uh, both the aspects for example infrastructure as code right is the managing and provisioning of infrastructure through code instead of using a manual process. So straightforward, if you write some JSON code or uh, YAML code, and if you give it to a platform like Terraform or CloudFormation or Azure ARM templates or Google Cloud Deployment Manager or Pulumi, all these tools, what it will do is it will generate the resource. So any of the system, take it Terraform, take it uh, CloudFormation or any of this uh, systems, what it basically does is it will provide you a way to generate infrastructure. But apart from that, if you're trying to maintain the configuration details, if you try to maintain the parameter details, settings for your application and uh, operating system, uh, uh, say uh, environment variables and uh, networks, uh, DNS names, all these details, for example, in a tool like Ansible, you'll maintain the network details, your production environment details, your deployment details. So apart from infrastructure provisioning, if you maintain the security details, like uh, if you are uh, maintaining a security token, if you want to store that uh, security token in a vault or something, so if it is providing solution not only for infrastructure but also for maintaining all this configuration needed for your application that is what we call configuration management so as a developer right while you choose an appropriate tool you need to know the length and breadth of the tool what the tool is capable of for example if i do uh, take cloud formation as a tool or terraform as a tool i will not have an opportunity to maintain the parameters needed for my application or I might not be having uh, uh, an opportunity to maintain the configurations uh, or a network uh, related detail, the DNS details of my ecosystem. Whereas if I use Ansible or Puppet, I'll be able to do it. So based on the nature of your work, based on the amount of work which you are going to do in your uh, solution, choosing the right tools or uh, taking a right tool or collaborating the tools perhaps for some purpose you might find ansible to be comfortable for some purpose you might be finding terraform to be comfortable who can stop you most of the things even though they are licensed uh, most aspects can be done without uh, any license or uh, there are open source softwares also available so choose the right toolkit or a collection of toolkits both for configuration management as well as infrastructure code. But at this point of time, I just want to give you the clear cut difference. Infrastructure as code and configuration management could be supported in some tools. For example, in Ansible, you can generate infrastructure. Also, you can manage configuration as well. So any set, uh, tool which is um, good at configuration management might not essentially uh, going for infrastructure maintenance or uh, provisioning. Some tools does both. Some tools does only infrastructure provisioning. They will not be uh, doing something related to configuration management. But for the uh, uh, GitOps environment, both are required. So hence, it is a clever idea to install or uh, install tools related to both the aspects. Okay. So the conclusive statement which I want to make is there cannot be a conclusion whatever we began with that is what i want to conclude also so since we have talked enough the first statement which we started today will only make sense no matter how many hours we talk end of the day we need to land at the same thing which our first statement talked about so having talked all this for the past one one and a half hour an operational framework as we have seen same DevOps, it seems as if we are uh, following the same DevOps uh, principles, but we have taken the best practices only for application development, like question control, collaboration, complaints, and CACD, and apply is the same. So this was there already in place. Same principles, not only applied for application code, but also it is available applied for infrastructure automation. 
So when it comes to infrastructure automation, what we continuously try to understand is there is something called as infrastructure provisioning. as well as configuration management. So in your organization for a rule if uh, I mean for a need if you want to put or if you want to uh, set up GitOps ecosystem in the usual DevOps environment two more layers need to be added uh, already people might be using it but they might not have made that part of the DevOps ecosystem if you add that also into the DevOps ecosystem and if you are able to automate the process of infrastructure creation in the CI CD pipeline that is what we call git ops that's the conclusive statement which I want to make okay <coughs> as I told I don't want to uh, build a whole pipeline here so I leave it to you or as we have told uh, when we come up with a proper course probably we can build a source code and we'll take it into git from git we can uh, use a ci cd pipeline so this ci cd pipeline is what is going to use a tool maybe like ansible or terraform and uh, based on the code whatever you write it will generate the infrastructure But for time being, just to show you how it naturally works, what is uh, uh, infrastructure management, what is uh, it, I have taken, even though there are a lot of tools, I taken a cloud approach in this course. I mean in this discussion. So please uh, listen, I'm going to demonstrate with the help of uh, an AWS component called as CloudFormation. As I have just shown you in the picture, for cloud native approach, AWS has its own solution, I, uh, uh, infrastructure as core solution called as CloudFormation. I will demonstrate it with the help of CloudFormation. So there is a solution called CloudFormation. But Ansible, Terraform, everything almost same, the idea is same we have to use an appropriate tool to get, uh, get the idea. Uh, actually what we can do is I am not going to uh, write something directly here but what I can tell you is in this component called cloud formation you can upload your code I told you right so a developer can put the code a template into this ecosystems and which would generate infra right so same principle here if you upload a template file maybe if you upload some YAML file it will generate the code or a we can manually create a template So, if you have written code, uh, your code would have been like this, right? So, in a YML document, your resource name,
So you can write the resource name here. As such and you can save it as a file. And later you can upload it. So like this, you can generate a template and you can upload it. So later you can update it and based on that you can generate the infrastructure. That is one way. And uh, once the stack is created, you can run and you can generate the infrastructure. So this is Amazon's way of provisioning the infrastructure. It is infrastructure as code. But I also told you configuration management. You should also be having a mechanism to know what is there in the system and uh, what changes you've been make, uh, making. And you need to know the entire ecosystems. For, for AWS, that configuration management can be done with the help of a thing called as cloud development kit okay so the cloud development uh, kit is a basically a software development framework to manage what your entire cloud configuration plus infrastructure so i'm just going to show you a co configuration which is created by using uh, cdk and for your reference i'll also share the code uh, with you also So the primary thing uh, here is, since it is going to connect with AWS, as I have told, you should have configured the AWS account. Since I did configure it already, I do have this. So my very, very simple demonstration here is, senior, you need to understand that once I do this code, what I would usually do is, I'll push this code into Git repository and from there, So the developer would write the code. In this case study, the code is actually written by using Python plus a technology and a library called CDK, which is both configuration management as well as infrastructure as code. Plus application code can also be uh, written here. So when you write this, it will go to Git. From Git, maybe I can install a CI/CD system like Jenkins. And Jenkins, what it would do is, it will take up this code and it will use a tool called as CDK. And using the CDK tool, it will deploy the proposed stack into the AWS. And if at all the already the stack is available, it will look for the changes that you have made and it will update the changes. This is a process. So right now I'm not going to uh, take up this uh, Jenkins component, uh, taking time and other stuff into consideration. So I'm going to manually show you that code is there. I'm not going to push it uh, from Git, but I manually took it from the Git. Assume that in the Jenkins, you might have written instruction to run the CDK command, but I'm going to run it manually and I'm going to show you, right? So that's the idea here. So here, as far as code is concerned, we have a Python application written where a stack of resources is being created. We have created only one stack called as task stack. And the task stack is part of this uh, folder called task. And here I have defined it. So as you could see, by using the essential libraries, what I'm trying to create is I'm just trying to create two resources. One is Let me create a queue called first queue. An S3 bucket, uh, those who don't know AWS, in, in uh, AWS uh, to store your uh, files as well as images or anything, they offer you a storage service. And similarly, if you need a messaging service, they offer you a service called as SPS, where you can uh, store the queue messages. So it's basically a platform 
for storing as well as the platform for uh, maintaining your messages. So those two services, I'm generating it. So if you go to AWS, you can manually create it, but I'm trying to maintain it as a configuration as and when I need it, I can update it. Or if it is not existent, it, I can create it. So I'm trying to generate the infrastructure by writing some code here. And uh, in S3 bucket, you can also install a static website also. So I'm just specifying enabling the static website as well as I'm enabling the public read access for it. So you can create as many stacks as you want. So the whole infrastructure. So in, in the theory, I described about uh, ideating the whole system, right? So if you have an idea about your whole configuration, you can create as many stacks as you want. You can maintain here. This is the code base of your infrastructure, right? So once you have the code base, number one, to run this application, first of all, this rather calling it an application to run this uh, IAC. Uh, first, you need to have the libraries to be installed in this project. I install the libraries. So the command which we are going to use is CDK. In PowerShell, it's not up working in the sense. So if you run the CDK component, it will tell you a documentation of what commands which you could use. So to list out all the stacks, if at all syntactically it is correct, it will list out all the stacks. And uh, to come up with the initial settings of your uh, whole stack by analyzing and uh, 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 reading the security details, everything, you need to bootstrap your configuration. Once it, you bootstrap all the configuration that is needed for your application, you can deploy it. So the three commands or two commands basically, which you can uh, do to set up the environment as well as to deploy the stack. So first I want to set up the environment. First of all, you need to check whether your stack definition is correct, right? And uh, to do that, PDK list is the command, which would ensure that you have written your instructions correct. So as far as my definition, there is only one stack, which is called task stack which it is identifying. So there is no syntactic problem in terms of definition. Next, I would uh, bootstrap the configurations and permissions that is needed for uh, the deployment. So since I have already configured my AWS account, based on my AWS account that is configured, it will be initializing the configuration and permissions for this current uh, solution. Okay. And you have to assume when you are building a pipeline, this AWS configure step, CDK list, CDK bootstrap, all this instruction would have written in the pipeline, which would be automated. Here I'm manually doing it. It's checking the accounts and it is getting the details of the configuration and permissions. Okay. And according to me, my account has admin details basically. I think I have bootstrapped this already. Let me try to see. Then if at all it is for the first time, those resources would have been properly created. But since this, everything is already there. Wait. So bootstrap is a one time process. I did it already in this system. Let me try to deploy.
So whatever the changes which you are making, already I made a deployment. Earlier the stack name was different. Right now it is asking that you are trying to create a bucket called prime bucket. Do you want to proceed with these changes? I say yes. I deleted the stack which is already created with the same name, it's in progress and it is not still recognized here. One last attempt, uh, if it is not working, let me just explain the process and I'll take up the questions. 
but the process is so i already ran this application i created a stack with the same name since it is still deleting there it is conflicting they say manually deleted So while I was starting the demonstration, I was uh, deleting the existing stacks from the AWS. So when I ran Bootstrap, the stack would have been created there. Once I run CDK deploy, the bucket as well as queue would have been created there. So that's the whole uh, process behind it. Still, it is the same problem, but what I want to conclusively say is if I run the CDK deploy command, it will create a stack in AWS as well as it is going to create an S3 bucket as well as uh, a queue in AWS. Later, if you want to change any configuration of this S3 as well as if you want to change any configuration of this queue, all you got to do is you need to come to this code, right? and uh, you need to rewrite the additional properties of the stack and if you since you have made changes if you try to redeploy it it will propose you the new changes which you are making as it is going to show right now since the bootstrapping is not done properly it is of course not going to run but it will propose the changes when you make a redeployment as is going to be shown in the instruction once you apply it the changes will be applied in the system so it will be tabulate what changes that is going to be proposed in the system and uh, it will ask you whether you want to go ahead since we haven't bootstrapped it clearly it's not going to work but in real time uh, in a proper configuration it will actually redeploy so this I am demonstrating by using AWS CDK. You take Terraform, you take Ansible, you take uh, any other form of system. Most of the systems, you would write your infrastructure in the form of code, the properties and other things related to that particular service or that particular uh, application will be defined in the configuration. As and when you run the instruction, it would update the stack as you want it to be. So this we have demonstrated it manually but as i have already told uh, if you write the code and if you push it to git maybe by using a pipeline uh, by using jenkins or any other tool instead of manually running these commands we automate execution of these commands by using a tool like jenkins so this is infrastructure and similarly the deployment to kubernetes or any other thing can also be done in the similar fashion so that is the workflow uh, behind git ops right so i try to demonstrate with the help of uh, aws cdk you take any other tool the process remains the same so let me rest the case of uh, this discussion with this i need to clear the cache and reconfigure my account to set up the basic settings i don't want to take your time on that but if you use the same process, it's going to work. I have even shared the code. You use AWS configure account and you use your account uh, secret key and uh, which you can download. So maybe a simple instruction. If you are into AWS to download your credentials, you can go to your account and under access keys, you can always get your access key and secret key by uh, installing AWS uh, CLI in your systems. If you configure your account and if you run my code, it will create S3 bucket as well as uh, SPS on your system. That's how basically it works. The idea is somehow we need to maintain the infrastructure integrity. Somehow we need to monitor the changes. And for everything there must be, I mean, information is very important. What is there in my system? What code I'm using? What infrastructure I'm using? How it is uh, changing time to time? What is the history of changes that has happened in my uh, application code as well as infrastructure code? There must be a single place where everything should be maintained. So the single source of truth is nothing but uh, your Git ecosystem and uh, your uh, tools like Ansible and other stuff 
will manage your uh, uh, infrastructure integrity plus uh, the changes that are happening in your configuration. So this idea called GitOps collaborate these principles together and the responsibility of collaborating should be taken by someone or a team which is taking up this uh, proposal. So GitOps is basically a proposal or a principle which proposes an idea to manage infrastructure and application deployment together.